I'm at Old Electric, and this is uh, Brooke. We're here today to teach you guys about electrical safety and how to keep you safe in certain uh, environments. Whenever you see something, I'm going to point them out here on uh, our electrical safety board. And to get things started, uh, as linemen and technicians at Palmetto Electric, we wear safety gear, uh, personal protective equipment. We wear hard hats made out of plastic, and uh, that protects anything that falls or may fall or could fall on us as we're working on overhead power lines, that kind of thing. We also have rubber gloves. These aren't gloves like you would find underneath your mom and dad's kitchen cabinet to, to wash dishes and that kind of thing. These are rated for a certain uh, electrical power. We rate it as voltage. There's a certain amount of voltage that we work with and these, these gloves protect us in case there's a you know, a fault or anything, or if we have to work on a live electricity. Um, and this keeps us safe. The leather protectors protect us against uh, thorn bushes, anything sharp, objects like that, uh, to prevent that from puncturing the, the rubber gloves. If so, they're damaged, and, and we, we have those tested every month to keep us safe. So we ship them off, we have to turn them in, get replacements, they, they test those, they come back. So that's a, a repetitive process. We, we always changing out our rubber protector gloves and that keeps us safe. Um, other things that will keep you guys safe, um, such as non-qualified personnel would be things like signage, danger, high voltage, we have these on all of our equipment, poles, transformers, uh, anything electrical that we provide out there that provides you uh, power and electricity to your home. I'm sure you guys have seen the electric, uh, the cyclone fence uh, around substations is what we call them. And uh, that, this protects the public from climbing over. It's got barbed wire fence on top. I'm sure you guys have seen all that stuff. And it's best to stay out of those areas and only qualified people are qualified to go in there with Palmetto Electric. So that, that kind of signage and stuff like that keeps all of us safe. Even me, I have, um, I have certain qualifications that, that I'm not allowed to go in a substation. That's a different department. So even that's there for me. Um, what we have here is electrical dis distribution board. That's what Palmetto Electric is. We distribute electric power to our members and we provide electric service and uh, we build parents, your mom, dads, uh, sons, daughters, whoever may have a service, we build them monthly and we, we control that billing through an electric meter and then mom and dad or whoever gets that bill, they open it up each month and they pay the cooperative, Palmetto Electric, the money used, what they use in electrical power. Um, so I'm going to light up the town and, and to begin with, electric power is generated whether it's coal, hydro, whatever it may be, wind, solar, um, ours is coal. Um, so it comes in from a transmission line which is Santee Cooper, that's, that's the big uh, power grid and they sell us the electric power. So we step it down and step down transformers in our substations. And this is what you see. Uh, I don't know if you can see it all, but that's the big areas where the cyclone fence is at. That's where the power comes in from the transmission group, Santee Cooper. And then we step it down to a proper voltage, uh, whether it's 120, 240 volt, 277, 480, 120, 208 volt. Those are voltages for different applications, whether it's residential, commercial um, applications. So that's what we provide electrical power to. Residential homes are 120, 240 volt because you have 120 volt outlets such as what I'm plugged into here. 
of these lights are probably 120 volts, maybe 240. Um, so it, it just depends on what you have in your home. Businesses are usually 120, 208 voltage because certain elevators need uh, uh, 208 volt to operate that elevator equipment. So it's all kind of applications of electricity that, that we provide our services to. So we're here today to show you some things that may happen, whether it's a thunderstorm that's come through and it's knocked down some power lines, it's knocked down a tree on the power line. Um, you can have an example of uh, somebody falling off a roof, what not to do, um, climbing, climbing on roofs and as, as little children if you see your mom and dad up there it's best not to do that we got a boat over there i'll explain the boat and the, and the safeties of that in there um, cars tractors digging into power lines the cars running off the road and hitting the pole i'm going to demonstrate all that for you and you'll you'll walk away today with some safety tips on what not to do Ever thought of all the ways you use electricity? We depend on electricity to light our homes, charge our phones and computers, wash our clothes, it powers our lives. But electricity can also be dangerous, even deadly, when used the wrong way. Keep these electrical safety tips in mind to avoid accidents and injuries. Electricity and liquids do not mix. Never place electronics and appliances near water, like next to the sink or the tub. This tip applies to gaming equipment too. Never place a drink near your gaming console. Spills could result in electric shock. Never climb trees near power lines and electrical equipment. Same goes for kites and drones. Before you fly them, make sure you're far away from any overhead power lines. Never pull a plug from an electrical outlet by its cord. Pull from the plug to avoid potential shock or ask an adult to help you. Going for a swim? Remember, never swim during stormy weather. If you hear thunder, immediately exit the pool until the storm has passed. These are just a few tips to keep in mind. Remember, electricity is amazing stuff, but you should always play it safe. If you're not sure about something, ask an adult. Want more tips? We're here to help. Contact us to learn more about electrical safety. So with that said, I have Neon Leon and Lightning Liz. And I'm sure you guys, how many have seen this program already? There's a few, quite a few, okay. Then at the end, I'll demonstrate the hot dog. I'm sure you remember the hot dog at the end where I demonstrate the flesh and that kind of thing and, and shot, shot the power line. We have squirrels, birds. Explain all that to you. So to get started, I usually start with like a thunderstorm that's just passed through uh, late in the evening, and we're we're in that season now. We're already getting thunderstorms, lightning, rain, heavy rains, wind, wind, and all that. I just said causes a lot of trouble for our guys at Diamond Electric. So here's a this is a, a tree limb that I just broke off, so it's nice and fresh, and it has water in it, just like our box. So it's called a conductor, just like we're a conductor. You'll hear, hear me use conductor, the term conductor, and the term insulator. So wood, wood, water, um, our flesh, our skin, we're, we can conduct electricity. Metal, I'm gonna use a metal, metal rod here to make this. I'm causing a fault just so you can see that this is a live electricity and it's very dangerous. So that's why I have my personal protective gear on. So the storm just passed by. Lightning Liz and Neon Leon, they, we still have some daylight. So the, the sun's back out, the storm ran through. It was windy, it knocked down some debris. It knocked down this tree limb and it's sitting, it's sitting on the power line. You can't really see much. But if I touch, if Lightning Liz happened to be walking by, she, she grazed her body into it. See how that's conducting electricity? Can y'all see it on this side? Huh? 
So what's happening is all of our equipment, just to explain this real quick, all of our power lines, whether it's overhead or underground transformers, our underground power lines, overhead power lines, that we're grounded to the, the earth. That's our best grounding grid that we have. So we want it to ground so when something like this happens, if a tree falls on a power line, we want it to trip that circuit because we want it to be safe in case somebody like Lightning Liz is walking by and she happens to step on the down power line, she's not going to get electrocuted or harmed in any way. It's no, our, our equipment trips out when there's a fall. So no different than your homes. If your home lightning strikes, thunder, lightning, wind, and your power goes out, but our system is still on. You may have something wrong in your home. A breaker might have tripped. Your TV stopped working. One side of the house isn't working, but the other side of the house is. And mom and dad will go to the breaker and they'll trip a breaker on. And, and then you, from your bedroom, will holler, yeah, it's working now, dad, mom, whatever. Same, same thing here on our system. If something goes out, all right, something goes out like that, we automatically know from our computer system, uh, our equipment speaks back to our dispatch, they know there's a power outage before you even call and say, hey, my lights are out. So that's how quick we know that there's a power outage in your area off a certain substation and a circuit. So we're already dispatching a lineman out there to go and repair that. And what he's looking for is, is a limb on the line, and some other things like squirrels on a, on a clear sunny day it could be just a squirrel that got wrapped up in one of our overhead transformers but he's looking for a down power line he's riding that circuit out and if he calls back and says hey dispatch i just cleaned, cleaned a tree off the line everything's safe dispatch can throw that signal back that 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 circuit from the office and it'll bring that um that power line back on and that lineman's still out there waiting in case it trips right back off. So that's how that kind of works. Let's see. No different. That was a down power line. This is a, I mean, that was a down tree. This is a down power line here. Leon, Leon's not wanting to light up. Trying a little bit. There we go. So anyway, Neon Leon, he happened to see a down power line and he grabbed it. And what he did was create a path of electricity from the power line down to his body to the ground. And the reason that happened is because any fault that we have, I just tried to explain it a little bit with the circuit breakers. Any faults we have, it's going to go to the ground and it's going to trip off a breaker, that kind of thing. But there's always a possibility to where that kind of stuff isn't safe at all. Just because I say in this class today that it may be dead, not active, or live electricity, we always have to think it could be, it could hurt me. I just need to totally leave it alone. So that's the best thing to do. Over in Bluffton, Hilton Head, you have uh, overhead power lines serving some islands that the people have. So you can have a sailboat with the mast on top. I doubt they're made now with metal, metal mast. That's the big long pole with the sail that comes down on it. It's usually fiberglass, I'm sure. And usually power lines that are built out in the rivers and the coastal waterways are, are high enough for boating and activity way up underneath them. 
but you never know we may have a, a huge spring tide the poles get weakened out there in the marsh they rot they could lean over sag the power line so even sailboats uh, in today's world they still have to be careful if they're going under things like that they have to be aware so that just goes to show you if even if that and if it was a metal mast and it hit that power line anybody on that boat could get harmed electrocuted and eat you know and die and that we all know water and electricity you know that it doesn't mix because water is a conductor just like us our bodies are made up of 70 percent water so always be alert if you ever on a sailboat you know that information there i mentioned climbing on rooftops you have from the meter point some people have the service wire going to the side of the house that wire is different than the coated i mean than the we call this bare bare electrical wires the service wires are coated with uh, rubber insulation sort of like this but much much tougher so that could be a, a hazard as well if you're up on a roof and you slip and fall that's probably going to be the first thing you try to put your arm on to grab and it's best not to be up on the roof uh, anyway so unless there's you know a doll around that knows what they're doing and, and cautious of that tractors i'll go into the the underground portion of this i was just speaking of the overhead lines and, and making things work on the on the overhead we have underground distribution and that just means that we've got buried electric line cables in certain neighborhoods that they dig down in the ground about five foot deep and you also have other power uh, not power but other entities such as hard gray telephone i don't know what's up here in this area you got fiber optic cables now um, telephone cable water sewer all that stuff's near our power lines so if anybody ever goes to dig, they have to call, or supposed to call, Locates, which is a company you call, and it's basically like an insurance policy for any construction guy that's doing it, a homeowner. They call this number, say, hey, I'm getting ready to dig some plants out by the road near your equipment, near Palmetto's equipment. So they send the guy out, and they flag, they locate the actual power lines in the ground, and they'll flag where um, the power cables are, phone, water, sewer, fiber, whatever it is. That way that guy knows when he's digging those plants, whether it's with a shovel or with a backhoe, something like that, he knows where that, all that stuff is. If he doesn't call that ticket, he just does it on his own and he digs into that stuff, then he gets a bill from whatever entity he harmed they'll charge you for all that that labor and time and, and materials to fix that uh, what he dug up or that individual dug up let's see so this guy happened to be digging close to our transformer he happened to dig too close and you get the power line cable can y'all see that so he's on the tractor and uh, see how dangerous that is? It caught fire. <laughs> That's a first. So anyway, what's the, the, as long as he's on the track, and that's, that's a good example. I'm glad that happened because it's part of what I'm saying here in a few seconds. The guy on the tractor hits that power line cable. It's supposedly supposed to trip off that circuit and dead in that electric wire. But if it did not, and that wire was still hot, he was still energized on that tractor, the tires on that tractor are made out of what? Rubber. So it's protecting him just like these rubber gloves are protecting me when I'm dealing with this alive electricity. 
and he needs to stay on that tractor until our guys show up or somebody lets him know qualified that hey this this line is de-energized and I mean it doesn't have any power to it. That's the only time he should move off that, that tractor unless something happens like it just did and it catches fire. He doesn't have a choice. He has to get off. So he's got to use his best judgment and you don't just get off with one leg. Usually you don't do that with a tractor anyway, but um, one leg out the door like you would a car. So you don't want to create a path with your body still on the metal frame and then you put your leg on the ground because that's no different than Lightning Liz or Neon Leon grabbing the wire and creating a new path to the ground because that's, that's where our fault electricity is going to trip off a brake. So the way they taught us to get out of a vehicle or a tractor is to jump with both feet and then you shuffle with your feet close together. I think it's 20 or 30 feet away from that energized or that power line and you, you'd be safe that way. Never ever get off, like I think with a tractor you step down on the foot peg, you're holding something and then you put your foot down on the ground. You got to remember, even with a car, if that was a car situation as well, you got to kind of stand up on the, on the seat somehow and just land with both feet. Don't let one hit before the other. And that's the safest path to get out of a vehicle like that or a tractor. That was with a, a motorized tractor. You could have a shovel. This is a miniature metal shovel. You could have same same effect. Okay. So always be cautious of anything that says danger, high voltage on the power line. Um, poles, whether it's overhead transformer poles, cyclone fence, you know those are uh, energized areas that have a lot of electricity and you have to be very careful. The, the birds and squirrels, I said on a sunny day, you know, everything like today is running smooth, lights on, everything's flowing natural, no problems. Birds can sit up here. The reason they can sit on our power lines and not get damaged is because when they land on that one power line and they're sitting all there, 10 of them in a row, whatever, they become part of that electrical circuit. They're not grounded to anything. They're basically just adding more to that, that energized power line. But if for some reason a bird, not typically a power outage for us, but if a bird happens to have a wingspan long enough to reach something that he spreads his wings out and hits a grounded part of that circuit, he can, die, he will die and then cause a power outage. Squirrels, you see them climbing all day long, you know. Squirrels are a big power outage for us. We even have squirrel guard cages that we put on our equipment to prevent squirrels from causing power outages. But if he happens to, he happens to hit something, you know, he's going he's to die as well. All right. So that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell here. Um, I think I've covered everything. The only other thing would be the flying kites. We used to talk about that. Uh, that string is, is a minimal uh, diameter of string. But, you know, if it happened to be damp and wet, and, you know, in an environment like that, a rainy day, rainy, windy day, you never want to fly anything that's going to be trapped or entangled into our power line. It's just not safe. Okay? So the last thing is, is, the, is the hot dog. We use a hot dog uh, wiener because it represents, you know, it's the closest thing it looks like our finger, our skin. So we use that to show you guys not to put your fingers in electrical outlets. If you touch electricity, what may happen to you, the damage it could cause.
So if you're ready for that, I'll do that, that last uh, little part.